We are Georgia and David. We recently quit our jobs to travel full time with our 14 year old Shelty Poo meat. Our first stop in Mexico was Saltillo. We spent 19 days there. And during that time, we saw breathtaking mountains, an impressive waterfall, and ate tons of delicious steak. In this video, we cover four day trips we took to Monterrey, Mexico's third largest city, and three nearby Pueblo Mexicos, or magic towns. Parras de la Fuente, Santiago, and Arteaga. Okay, so we are in our first Pueblo Magico of this trip, which is Parras de la Fuente. Um, they boast having the oldest winery in the Americas. It was opened in 1598. So we are getting ready to go inside um, Casa Madero with um, Meep, and hopefully they are dog friendly. We okay. found a little information online that seems like it may be. Um, and most of the other wineries we went to in Carretero were, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, vamos a ver. A few moments later. We just visited their little visitor center um, and they don't do tastings no. and tours are by appointment only. And they will sell you a bottle of wine and open it and give you two glasses, but they actually don't have anywhere for you to consume it. There's a bench. Yeah, <laughs> a dirty bench. Um, there's no patio, no gardens, no tables. Um, so unless you're just happen to be super close, I would not recommend visiting. Um, I don't really see the point. They definitely aren't making a visitor friendly experience. It does have some pretty gr grounds though. We are standing in the little kiosco here at Casa Madero. Um, we bought a bottle of their reserve Shiraz and two glasses. Um, it tastes okay. Um, I think that a lot of the wines we had in the Carretero region were better. It's super cool that it is the oldest winery in the Americas and that it was opened in 1598, but I don't know if that alone really makes it worth the stop. After Casa Madero, we went to visit Para Centro. Meep enjoyed the green spaces and we enjoyed the architecture and artisan booths. After walking around for a while, we decided to find a place to eat. We found La Casona, a pet-friendly restaurant just a couple of blocks from Centro. You can actually let Meep come in. She's sitting here next to me. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and uh, so far I've ordered a Vampiro and Georgia ordered a Michelada. We didn't know exactly what we ordered, but when it came out, it looked like a couple of thick porterhouse steaks. They were cooked and seasoned to perfection, and as you can see, Meep had a great time and even tried to steal some scraps. Prados was a great place to spend an afternoon. This morning, we are on our way to Monterey. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have Meep with us because we are wanting to do a couple things that are not dog friendly. Um, we just paid our toll, um, and that is one thing to know is that if you are driving in Mexico for any kind of distance um, you will need to have some cash uh, with you because most of the good quality highways are toll roads uh, they call them casetas and ahead of time they have the price before you get up um, this one was very cheap it was only 51 pesos uh, which is about two dollars and fifty cents um, we've paid some tolls as high as like 210 uh, pesos so far, which is about $10. So um, the ride to Monterey should be about an hour and 10 minutes. We have finally arrived at Parque La Huasteca. I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, um, but it is right outside of Monterey and it is absolutely spectacular. Um, Dave and I have done a lot of traveling. We have seen a lot of mountains, but this is seriously impressive. So we're walking down this path. You can see the mountains are just gorgeous. And there's like these holes dug into the side of them. Don't know what caused that. That's really cool looking. Everywhere you look, it is just Absolutely gorgeous. So we just had to stop again. We got a little bit further down the road. Um, 
David and I usually do the Blue Ridge Parkway. Mm -hmm. And we have always thought that that is just a spectacular drive and it has amazing views. But these mountains are incredible. There is such contrast between the white stone and the dry foliage. It is just breathtaking. After visiting La Huasteca Park, we drove to Monterrey Centro to visit Mercado Juarez. Specifically, we wanted to try out a famous local dish. And we just got done eating at uh, El Pipi Ripao. I think it's how it's pronounced, maybe. Uh, but anyway, they have Cabrito, which is a uh, young uh, goat. Uh, and it was, we had a, a leg at one, it was really, really nice. And we also had a little bit of sirloin. Very good place to eat. Um, which is an old uh, factory that they've converted into a very cool museum. They had a furnace show um, and they had a little light show. Um, Some sort of planetarium show. Yeah, it was kind of cool. Um, so if you're in the area, I'd recommend stopping by. It's a cool little place. So we're still here at the uh, Orno Museum and we're at this little restaurant called uh, the El Lingote. Um, and uh, we got ourselves a couple of micheladas uh, with some um, Goes to Keys Amber, and you can see uh, there's a lot of stuff behind me here. We just rode the vinicular up to the very top, where you can see everything around like 360 views. Yeah, so the top of El Orno Trace has fantastic views of all of Monterey. The mountains are behind us, the city uh, is beside us, and this is awesome. Um, the entrance fee was 150 pesos per person, or $7.50, and yeah, for the experience, it is amazing, it is completely worth it. I would definitely go out of your way to come here. <laughs> We are back in Monterey and you can see we have Meek with us this time. We are walking around the Macro Plaza and after this we are headed to the Pueblo Magico of Santiago and after we have lunch there we are headed on to the Cola de Caballo which is a waterfall. So Meek's excited about the day? Me? Super excited. We took our time walking around the Macro Plaza in Monterey. There were a couple of pretty churches nearby some impressive government buildings, a huge fountain featuring Neptune, and various statues and sculptures. We wish the fountain was in operation, but we are guessing it's hard to keep going in dry season. Before we left for Santiago, we snapped a picture in front of the Monterey City Letters. When we arrived to Santiago, we were absolutely starving. La Posteria 77 had a beautiful shady garden area and was pet friendly, so we were sold. You're sitting outside in their, uh, I guess their Teresa, the Terrace era area. We had some uh, some chicken, and we had a wonderful little lunch here. My flautas were delicious. They had a bunch of different sauces, um, and then uh, how were your enchilada suizas? Oh, they're pretty good. Yeah. I think we're actually going to stay a little bit longer because it is really nice and cool and shady back here, and get a piece of cheesecake and a couple of cappuccinos. After lunch, we strolled around the main square before heading to Cola de Caballo. So, if you are trying to go to Cola de Caballo, Make sure you ignore the Google directions and just follow the blue signs that say Cascada de Caballo, because those are correct. <laughs> Parking is very convenient and it was 50 pesos. <laughs> as you can see, the, the roosters are really excited about going to the Cascada as well. So you can ride a horse or you can take a carriage or you can just walk 
to the waterfall. Meep has alternative transportation. <laughs> and as you can see, she is quite happy riding in her little backpack. We made it to the waterfall. It is absolutely beautiful. And the hike isn't bad at all, even though they have all the horses and the carriages and they try to get to take a ride. I mean, unless you're just in really bad shape or it's a yeah. super hot day, I don't recommend bothering with it. I don't think it's really worth it. But uh, have definitely, a look definitely, here. Definitely watch out for the horse poop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have a look here at the view you get. So I definitely think the little hike is quite rewarding. So at the top of Cola de Caballo is a little uh, kind of convenience store and they have bottles of water and some snacks and stuff. So we stopped up here. We got ourselves a bottle of uh, Topo Chico and got me a bottle of water before we started the descent down. Well, me fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> she found riding the backpack very tiring. <laughs> just left uh, Cola de Caballo and we are going back down the very windy roads um, and before we head back to Saltillo we have to stop at Carnes Ramos. Um, we actually stopped at Carnes Ramos the other day when we were in Monterrey and they have the most amazing chicharrones. Um, they are basically thick pieces of bacon with the skin on that have been fried up crispy. Uh, so we'll be stopping back by there to get another kilo of those before we head back to our Airbnb. So we are at uh, Prisa La Boca, which is normally a much larger lake in front of these mountains. And I'm not sure if they've diverted the water somewhere because there's machinery. Um, but you can see there's boats way down there uh, that normally do boat tours of the lake. And they have this really nice boardwalk with a bunch of restaurants. So I'm not sure if this is just because it's dry season um, or like I said, this is no longer really a lake area. So we decided to take the Jeep off-road and drive it through the dried up lake bed get a little closer to the water. Looks like everybody else is doing it too. Yeah, we've seen, as you can see, there's other cars down there, so we're not the only ones. But this, this boat seems like uh, it might have been previously in the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know we've seen a couple other uh, Mexican YouTubers come to this area and they've done boat tours, so I would have to say that the water is normally much higher than this but I think we are kind of at the end of dry season so I think uh, rainy season usually starts in I believe May and we are uh, in the end of April so this is probably as low or as dry as it does get. So this morning we're heading to Arteaga which is a Pueblo Magico uh, about 20 minutes away ish and today they actually have a Sunday market yeah, so um, Pueblo Magico is a distinction that's given by the Mexican Bureau of Tourism. Um, I think there are 130 Pueblo Magicos, and Pueblo Magico just means magic town. And so for one reason or another, they're a special town that the Mexican Tourism Board thinks is uh, deserving of a visit. And so our goal over the next three years is to visit 100 of the Pueblo Magicos. And as you can hear, me is extremely excited <laughs> <laughs> to be going today. We just arrived um, at the Alameda in Arteaga and it is about 10.20 uh, on a Sunday and most of the vendors are still setting up. Um, I had read online that the market starts at 9. Um, I would suggest maybe coming around 11, although I will say that there are a few parking lots around and I don't know how quickly they fill up, but we were able to easily get a spot for 20 pesos for the day, so just a dollar. 
but it looks like it's quite a big market um, and it's in a beautiful park, so it's a really nice location. Meep is super excited. Since it didn't look like the market would be in full swing until later, we decided to check out the main church in town, La Parroquia de San Isidor Labrador. It was an easy 1.5 kilometer walk from the Almeida along a stream. There's a little stream that cuts through town and we are currently walking along it, but the trees that line the little stream are huge. They have trunks that are extremely wide and then through the top is like a bunch of like medium sized trees growing out of it. It's very interesting. I haven't seen trees like this before. When we were almost to the church, we saw a carving of La Llorona. The legend says she drowned her children before killing herself because her husband left her. God cursed her to wander and find her lost children so she can finally get into heaven. And sometimes she takes other children mistaking them for her own. A Mexican boogeyman story and good way to keep kids in line. After a short visit at the church, we walked back to the market. On the way, we stopped for lunch at a pet-friendly restaurant. I had gorditas with different fillings, and Georgia had pork and adobado sauce. We both had micheladas, and of course, Meep helped out. So as you can see, I have purchased a hat. <laughs> yeah, we need a change. Yeah, so this is kind of a strange thing about Mexico is that um, the second to largest denomination is a 500 peso bill, which is basically a $25 bill. You would think that that would be quite usable. It is not. <laughs> no one ever has changed. They look at you like they hate you when you try to pay with it. <laughs> Sometimes even the 200. Yeah, so um, like a lot of the um, pastries and ice creams and things like that are somewhere between a dollar and three dollars. So if you hand them a $25 bill, they won't take it. Um, so we we're kind of looking for something more expensive to buy to break one of those 500s. And this hat fit the bill. It was uh, 350. Uh, so it was about $17. So now we have appropriate uh, <laughs> denominations <laughs> to go and purchase some of the food items. So uh, we're going to continue to walk through the market. We made a few more laps around the market buying a couple of different pan de elotes, which is sweet Mexican cornbread from different vendors. On the way back, we stopped at the Pueblo Mexico sign for a picture with meat. All in all, I think we would definitely have to say that northern Mexico is completely underrated. La Josteca Mountains, the Cola de Caballo Waterfall, the Arteaga Sunday Market were all great experiences. We thoroughly enjoyed our stay. <laughs>